And then he called and he said, you know, he wanted to be the one, the person to call me directly. Um, but he had to wait to hear back from some producers and thing. But before this, in my head, I was like, all right, he's either calling me to say, congrats, you got the role, or unfortunately, mm. we had to go with someone else. But I was prepared for either one. Mm. And I'm calling him say, yeah, I was waiting, but um, just wanted to let you know, if you want the role, it's yours. Mm. Mm. Touch. Mm. Welcome back, people, to the Table Read podcast. Hope you're all well. Hope you're happy. Hope you're smiling. Today's one, I have a very, very, very special guest. I feel like a lot of you know who she is. Fresh face, up and coming star, superstar. What else? You give me words. What else? What else? You do know. There's so, there's just so. (sighs) Shan O. Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Shan. The amazing Chantal Jackson, <laughs> fresh in London from the JA. Thank you. How are you finding it? Honestly, mm. how are you finding? How are you finding London? You know what? I do love London. Mm. Lo- I say London is my second city. I love traveling in London in terms of taking the train. It's like awesome to get around. However, you like the train. I do like the train. Something that no Londoner has ever said. I love taking the train. I, I, listen, I can hop on a train, I get somewhere in six minutes, I walk three minutes, I'm there, bong bang. Fair bang. enough. You know what? Driving, there are so many roadblocks and road closures. Yeah. So the train makes sense. You know, getting around is I don't my even, city I don't even drive, app, but I know that. City mapper, get it. That's the thing. However, <laughs> the weather. The bipolar weather mm-hmm. in London, where I experience four seasons in one day. Mm-hmm. It's a bit mad. Welcome to my city. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. We love it here, don't we, guys? <laughs> <laughs> but you're enjoying yourself, nonetheless. Yeah. So. I love it. Certainly a change from Jamaica, isn't it? <laughs> to say the least. Which is where your career started. <laughs> yeah. You see, you notice I'm starting to do little segues now, Billy. I've been working on my my transitioning. It's not get, it's all right, but I'm getting there. You're doing well. I'm doing all right. So, me and you met on Devon Paradise. We're going to get to that. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's going to take up a chunk of mm-hmm. <laughs> the podcast. But I don't really know too much of your, your story or your background or anything like that. I feel like I've known everything, well, not everything, but most of the stuff past when I've met you. But mm-hmm. I don't know the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if this is your middle. I don't uh, if it's not, I don't know your middle. I don't know. I don't know. I'm about to find out if it is your middle or, or not. Um, so yeah. Enlighten me. Tell the Enlighten. people where, where did it all start sure. for Chantal Jackson? First of all, I'm loving this cozy couch. Oh, you like our setup? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. You're, you're welcome. This this is how me and Billy get down, you know. What Wonderful. I mean? Very comfy. I could yeah. Cool. <laughs> But yes, I did. I started acting when I was 12 years old. So I started in high school, first form. And I pretty much wanted a reason to not go home early. Yes. But I wanted a good reason because I didn't have a lot of friends and I wasn't idle or anything. So I wanted to join a club or do a sport, which is somewhat mandatory at Arden. Um, even though I thought I was athletic, I really wasn't. What sport did you play? I tried tennis. It didn't work. I tried track and field. I came last every time. None of them worked. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, it has to be a club. And I decided to join the drama club because like in primary school, our, our, our teachers would always teach us folk songs and poems. And I kind of liked that. Hmm. So I joined the drama club and... You know, I grew up as a, as a, I'm an only child for my dad, mm-hmm. and I was also a very lonely child, so I was very isolated most of my life growing up. So I'd write poems a lot about how I was feeling and all of that. So the drama club was really a safe space for us. Um, it gave us opportunity to tell our truths, and I found that there were other persons going through similar situations that I was going through, yeah. and so I didn't feel so alone, and we could write our stories and write other people's stories. And I was very, it was very warming or um, whenever I'd perform and person 
persons would be affected by it, you know? So, so or I, I do a poem and other people could relate to it and I'm like, wow, you know, I'm making an impact in some way. <clears throat> so that's how I started. And then right after high school, of course, I wanted to do drama. I decided this is my passion. This is it. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> but my father, being an old time, long time, traditional man from them old time, long time <laughs> there. <laughs> he was like, acting, that's not a career, that's like a hobby. You need to be like a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor or a nurse. Those are careers, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it was a fight. I didn't even apply for sixth form. I didn't apply for any universities because I was like, I'm going to drama school. There and you go. we had a drama school in the Manly College in Jamaica, and that's where I wanted to go. And that was like, hell no. Of course, he's paying my school fees at the time. Oh, yeah, so you have no choice. So I had no choice, <laughs> really. You're finished. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. <Pretty> much. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Frank, no, I got you, neighbor. Thank you very I got much. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, I ended up going to nursing school because that's what he said. And while I was there, like the theory aspect of it, Shut that, shut it up. 199 to getting that okay, right. When it came on to the physical part and the blood, I was like, you know what? Don't think this is for me. What, the actual like performing? The actual, because you have to do the, the, the theory part, but then yeah. you have to do the practical part. Like, and the practical part you wasn't feeling? I was like, you know, like lifting people. I'm a very small, tiny oh, person. Fair, 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 fair. Okay, you okay. know, I don't okay, think okay. it's gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> and it just wasn't my passion, you know? Mm. And for my 18th birthday, because you can't le legally work until you're 18. And so mm. for my 18th birthday, I prayed and I was like, I don't want a big party. I don't need a big cake. I don't need nothing fancy. I need a job. <laughs> because then if I have a job and I'm paying certain things, then I can dictate certain things. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're a bad man. You, you know? know what I mean? So I, you know, I prayed for it. I sent out resumes and I got a job and I was like, yes, so I can do my job. I can do school part time and then mm. in the evenings I can still go to the theater, you know? That's a good plan. Very so good plan. that's what I that's what I started to do. Um, and then my very first commercial play, it's so funny because my friend, she was doing front of house mm. for um Daily Harris, who is a big playwright in Jamaica. But she got sick, so she asked me to fill in because I wasn't really in the theater scene commercially. So I was literally tearing tickets at the front. Uh, my mind, I thought she asked you to fill in on stage. No. I was like, what kind of madness? Front of house. Could you imagine a friend going, oh, I'm sick. Man, Hold I'm on. I'm going to get to that. Oh, continue. I'm going to get to that. <laughs> continue. I was tearing tickets and seating people, right? And then the director, she came to me and she, because she knew I acted from high school. And mm. my, my high school, in terms of the performing arts, were exceptional. I, okay. I'm not like, like, but. Same really part. and truly, big you up, know, so a lot of people knew what's from like JCDC competitions, which is mm. like a cultural competition where you go and perform for like compete against okay. other schools and literally tearing tickets. And the director came to me one week and she said, um, I'm going to need you to learn the script. She gave me the script. You're going on stage in two weeks because I need you to fill in for this person, this actress. The same show that you were doing in front of her? Yeah, literally. I was literally tearing tickets at front of house. And she came and she said, um, I'm going to need you to be on stage in two weeks. Here's the script. Bam. Boogie. <laughs> I was like, huh? That's mad. <laughs> That's huh? mad. I was so nervous, Taj. That's I remember mad. even because I didn't get rehearsals with the actual cast. The show was already running. So you had to learn the lines. So I had to learn the lines. I had to like go and watch the show. And I got maybe two rehearsals. And I remember when she was rehearsing with me because I was so nervous. So. I wasn't moving naturally, like instead of walking straight, I'd walk like step, step to the side. And she's like, you're walking like a crab. Are you a crab? <laughs> Why are you moving like a crab? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but looking for me, my drama teacher from mm. high school, she was actually in the play as well. Nice. So I had her guidance and I had, you know, Dela Harris's guidance and it was lovely, but that was my introduction to commercial theater. Nice. Just like front of house, get the script, bam, figure it out, you're going on. And so my experience was pretty, um, pretty much 
on the job experience best way sometimes yeah and Honestly. then i kind of started working with her company so whenever i'm not on stage i'm doing um stage managing or nice. i'm working with the costumes because i just love the theater i love being around the theater all aspects of it is is a theater culture well, you said high schools would compete against each other mm -hmm. and uh, do someone tell me i've never heard anything like that really in, no schools maybe like it's on sports day you play football with other schools i've never heard in london like i said if anybody knows please tell me where schools will compete in anything that has to do with performing arts like i've never the, so like how is it's a theater culture yeah. like so like we have a much bigger theater community than a film community okay so we have this thing called jcd which is the jamaica cultural and development commission mm. and so every year they'd have competitions for all aspects of the arts so okay. speech and drama music dance literary arts fine arts all of that and schools would compete against each other and then so you and there are different phases so you have the elimination round and then the next one and then the nationals which is like when the top schools get in and you win like gold medals and oh. then there's a regionals and then we have this thing so every year for independence there's this um celebration called mellow go round mm. and they get the best performances from jcdc competitions to come and perf it's grand it's grand i love it I was going to say, why is there nothing like that in the UK? I'll do it myself. You'd think I'll do there it myself. Is. Anyway. You'd, th you'd think <laughs> there it. is. I'll do it myself. <laughs> you, it's it. it's, it it's my own massive. Hands. And this is like from primary school because there are primary schools. What? So kids that are between the ages of 7 and 12 because there are different categories. And then you have the community based. So if there's a That's community amazing. drama club, that would be like maybe category five seven so that would be like between 18 to 25 and you compete and it's like you put on shows and compete on huge shows yeah. so I, you so you can put on so there are limits so the, the plays are maybe like up to 20 minutes yeah um each uh poem has to be up to three minutes and so yeah no, and you perform there's nothing like that unless it's maybe like i remember my part-time drama school was meant to do something like that but it was more between drama schools but it wasn't really like a competition. It was more like a showcase of different drama schools. Competition. So I don't, there's no, I don't think there's any, there's not, please someone tell me, but in my mind, there's nothing. Is there? Yeah, that, the Jack Petchy thing. Have you heard of that? Jack Petchy, yeah. you're right, you're right. So is it? I don't Because I'm like, there has I don't, I don't, to be. I don't think it's as big as their one though. It's, like just, it's just a little thing here and there. Yeah, it's like a little thing. Like it doesn't go like you said. It goes from like primary school onwards. Yeah, and, and then there's like national. At the tertiary level, there is something called Talawa, which the University of the West Indies puts on. Talawa, I know and about I Talawa. And I did Talawa as well. I know about Talawa. So and that's that's primarily for university students. I know about Talawa. Yeah, mad. Been and the like the competition I used to work at had Talawa yes. performances. Yeah, it's that's nice. Nuts. Yeah, proper. UK, fix up, man. Please, come on, let's go. Come on, let's get, it's let's get, let's get it going. Proper. Please, come on, come on. Go. Like, I went to the Brit school. Brit school would win every year. I'm not going to lie. Oh, come on, we have well, music, you dance, never know. We've got everything. We'd win everything. We, like, we, there were some talented kids in, in, in Brit from year 10 to 13. So if there was like a competition of schools competing for dance music, Brit school's sweeping every year. I'm not going to lie. Whatever school, if you want, if you want smoke, Say no more. Even though I don't go to the school anymore, I can still sign up. <laughs> no, you should. We'd wipe it. That's and mad. what it does, it, it, because the, the competition is so intense. I can so, imagine. So, like, you have to, your level has to be up. Like, no one wants to lose. That's mad. That sounds so like a lot of So it's proper <laughs> intense. And, like, my school, we're entering, like, a hundred pieces. That's not like so much poems, fun. prose, And this is what you're in drama. school? Yeah. So you know how much, that sounds like so much fun. I was doing my external exams. I was doing my external exams and it was a national finals and I'm in my history exam like because I could see them outside the buses waiting for me and I'm like... We need to get us. We need to get together <laughs> in the UK, man. Proper. It was really good. That's a lot of training. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of... from Because like you said, from school, you're doing mm -hmm. theatre competitions mm -hmm. where you have to be on your A game. Yeah. Which is, I guess, how you landed the role in Yardi. You see my segues, Billy. You, you see my segues, what? Billy. You see my segues, bro. <laughs> Let me know. The same about me. It's about this young lady right here. As I was saying. Yardi, wow. Yardy. You know what? When I when I got Yardi, I was doing a play with Dela Harris again because I just like mm. um, started working with her company, 
And I just did Sprinter like the year before. And I did a short film right after Sprinter. Mm. And it was, it was really a passion product, project. Sorry, I'm tongue twisting. <laughs> <laughs> it was a passion project. So um, we have this thing called, uh, so the Jamaica um, Film and Television Association, JAFTA, yeah. Mm -hmm. So every year they try to sponsor five persons. So they give them like 500 thousand jamaican dollars if you know the jamaican dollar it's that's not much <laughs> to do a short film after you pay for like the location <laughs> and you pay for all of these things there's nothing left <laughs> five thousand jamaica five hundred thousand jamaican dollars that's oh, like five hundred thousand yeah but like oh. do the math it's maybe like in pound as five hundred thousand in pound as Okay, you're gonna tell us. You Google it, God, yeah. But it's like let's divide <laughs> five hundred thousand by like two hundred, and you get it. So that's what they get to do a short can, can film. Tell, can tell, I'm listening. And I did that short film, <clears throat> proper passion project, as I said. We weren't getting paid or anything, but I was so fascinated with the story. Mm. It was like a one take thing. So like I did twenty seven takes of the first, the whole first scene. How much is it? Did you do it? About to say, yeah, you've got, got it at the exact same time. Pounds. <laughs> yeah, it's about two and a half grand, yeah. yeah. For a, a short film. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Nah, so, nah, yeah. Nah. So, and they gave like five producers um, that amount to do a short film. So, that's what I did. It's something. It's something, it's but, something. but you know where I'm coming from. It's, it's not much. Yeah, it's better than nothing, but it might as well be nothing. <laughs> depending on what so there is no pay from it, really. Yeah. It's, you just really want, you'd, you'd have to want to tell that story. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it was. And then the way the director wanted to do it, it's, it's a way I've never done film before, which is a one take from the bedroom to the kitchen to nice. outside to the, literally. So if something goes wrong, any way through that, we have to start all over from the top. Like, I love it. So it was so fun. And I did that project. Um, and they were casting in Jamaica for Yardi because they wanted Jamaican Zanting. And the casting director in, in, um, in Jamaica, apparently she sent that short film to the producers of Yardi because nice. I've never really done anything on film before mm. then. I've only done theater. So yeah. there was nothing for them to see. And she sent that, and then they said, okay, we want her to do a self-tape. Now, this is the first time I'm doing a self-tape, right? So I go into the room, and she's like, they gave me the script. So, of course, being a theater practitioner where we have to do everything you're big, doing, yeah, yeah. Because everyone at the back needs to see what you're doing. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, do you audition? <laughs> can imagine. Can imagine she's filmed it perfectly and like her head's going to the side oh of the thing. Doing all gosh, that while she's doing all the of thing this, like this, you know? Because she's not staying in the frame. And then she was like, okay, just like take it down a bit. Yeah. Same intensity, but you know? So that's when I, so even for film, that was also learning on the job as well mm. because I got no film training mm. in Jamaica, really. Um, did a bit of TV, like commercials and stuff, but nothing on a grand scale, you know? Mm. So they sent that to the producers and then Idris himself flew to Jamaica. Now, when she called, when she sent it, she called and she said, hey, um, Chantal, what are you doing? Are you sitting or are you standing? And I said, well, I'm folding some clothes because I just did some laundry. What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> She said, I think you should sit. So I literally sat on the floor because I was like, in my room, I said, all right, what's going on? You know what I mean? And she said, well, the director is coming and he'd like to meet you. So I said, okay, um, what should I do? What should I wear? And she said, wear the same thing you wore. It's the same scene and all of that. Now, in my head, Taj, oh. the director <laughs> was maybe like, this might sound bad, but I just... I was expecting like a short British person. Oh, you didn't know it was Idris? I didn't know Idris oh. was the director. I knew he was affiliated with the film. I thought he was like an executive producer who I might possibly, maybe at some point, probably meet. Did the person call you not say Idris Elba was coming to me? No, she what? said the director is coming. Nah, they set you up for a madness. <laughs> they set you up for a madness. So I'm going to put on the same clothes and everything. And then when I got there, I realized that the list of persons auditioning was very limited. And I was the only female on the list so i said okay no see. pressure mm. no pressure that's what you want to see so i went in the room and there's this giant of a person <laughs> how tall is idris elba giant 
tall. You're going to tell I, us. I, I got it, Billy. I got Thank it. I got you it, very I got much. It, I got it, son. Don't worry about this it. I got this one. giant of a person, Idris. and he's very chill. You know what I mean? Like, very... And I'm like, oh, you're the, you're the director. About 6263, no. six, like, yeah. Six, that, two, six. Yeah. Like, oh. Compared to me, that's quite tall. <laughs> this is, this is the, the director, huh? But in my head. But I was like very cool and tempered. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I got this. Mm-hmm. I did not in my head. <laughs> so, and he happened to fly Amel in as well. Amel and me. Because he wanted us to do the scene together. And it was literally like a space like this. Mm. with a, just a couch like this. And he said, could you do the scene together? And he had a camera and everything. I was like, oh, okay. I said, can I, can I take my shoes off? Because I just want to feel a bit comfortable. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was nervous <laughs> as hell. I was like, is it okay to take my shoes off? <laughs> just do it barefoot. <laughs> I was like, yeah, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And by this time, Amel had, had done this scene maybe 153 times, mm. right? So he was like, okay, down. What the fuck? Yeah, because he was like, he was lying down, and I come in, and we start the scene. Oh. So he was like, oh, okay, like on to the 154, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, he probably did it better times, to be fair. But then the scene got, we did it, it, it got really intense, and then... I noticed that in the corner of my eye, Idris took the camera from the camera guy and he just started recording himself and he was doing all these things. And I was like, oh, 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 yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and at the end of it, you know, Amel left and he asked everyone to leave the room. So it was just me and him. And he was like, you know, you know, Chantal, this is my baby. This is my baby. You know, would, you, would you work for me? <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you work for me? This is Idris. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like literally like this. He was like, no. <laughs> Tap my leg. Listen, and, listen big man, yeah. Oh, this, this is my baby. You know, would you work for me? And I was like, I was like of, of course. Yeah. I was like, if you want me to. Yes. <laughs> Barefoot and ting. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, all right. And we'll get back to you. And, you know? So I stepped out and I was like, whoa. And then I called the casting director. I'm saying, never tell me, say, I just said to do it. Stop. <laughs> you didn't tell me what it was. That would have been the first thing I said to you was that, by the way, Idris Elba, the director of what you auditioned for, number one. That's the Rob, first thing I would have said. Listen, but it was good. And then we met up for lunch after that with Amel and we were chatting and saying later on, he told me that he did that because he wanted to see if we had chemistry, like just mm. conversing and stuff. And he, when he was leaving, he was like, don't change your hair. And I said, why? That's hint, always, hint. as soon as you hear them say something hint, about your hint. hair, you know you have basically you, gotten... You know, hint, hint. and he's like, no, nothing, just, just don't change your hair. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and literally two weeks later, I'm in bed sleeping. This is like 7 a.m. I don't do 7 a.m. unless I have to do mm-hmm. 7 a.m. Preach. You know what I mean? Preach. And my phone rings, and it's the casting director again, and she says, Idris wants to call you. Can I give him your number? I said, <laughs> what do you mean? Give him. And Taj, I sat in that bed. I didn't pee. I didn't wash my face. I didn't brush my teeth. I didn't. Just I woke sat, up and sat up call. in bed like this with a full bladder, matter on my eye. If you know what matter means, not the little things with everything. <laughs> with the phone like this for like an hour, just waiting, <laughs> waiting for that phone call. I'm like, did I give her the right number? What's going on? <laughs> And then he called and he said, you know, he wanted to be the one, the person to call me directly. Um, but he had to wait to hear back from some producers and thing. But before this, in my head, I was like, all right, he's either calling me to say, congrats, you got the role. Or unfortunately, mm. you had to go with someone else. But I was prepared for either one. Mm. And I'm calling him say, yeah, I was waiting, but um, just wanted to let you know, if you want the role, it's yours. Mm. Mm. Taj, mm. I screamed in that phone like a mad person. And then he came back and he was like, now that my hearing is back, is that a Don't yes? God. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, I'm so sorry, but goes, yes. What if he just goes, 
second four. I'm not gonna lie to you. I can't be hearing that. No, just that. no, that's all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get somebody else. Now nah, you blew it, love. You blew it. You blew it. You blew it. Yeah, I could sense he did this. <laughs> I could sense it, and he comes back. He's like, now that my hearing is back, <laughs> is that a yes? It's like yes. I'm so sorry, but yes. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, that's how I got that. So you already filmed in 2017. 2017 filmed not far from me, I think you said. We filmed in Hackney. East, East London, Hackney, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Filmed, um, and filmed in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, did you ever think you'd get a role that would film in Jamaica? Every time you think of roles, like, because like, most like, like me, I'm always like, yeah, cool, I want to shoot in America or whatever. Mm-hmm. So in your mind, did you ever think you'd get, um, like, your biggest role that is worldwide to shoot in Jamaica? You know what? Because I've, I was raised in Jamaica, mm. like, Jamaica is such a tiny place. And uh, until I traveled for the first time, Mm. I didn't know what that meant or what it felt like to experience the world. Mm. And so naturally, I could only think of filming in Jamaica, you know, Um, until I went outside of Jamaica. And I'm like, wow, this is grand. There are so many opportunities. You can pretty much film anywhere in the world and make it anywhere in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But I love telling Jamaican stories. So I'm always excited to film in Jamaica and tell Jamaican stories and film from a Jamaican perspective. But I'd pretty much film, now that I've started traveling, I'd film anywhere. Cause the, like, I think my favorite thing about traveling is culture and experiencing different mm. cultures. So I'd love to experience different cultures, but of course, filming in Jamaica, any day, any there time. It has the sun. Come on. And so does where you film your most recent role. Uh, Look at me and my segues, Billy. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Doing so well, bro. Are you experiencing and witnessing (laughs) the greatness? Sorry, whatever. (laughs) Death in Paradise, Chance. Death in Paradise. Death in Paradise. Dip. 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 Eleven? Dip eleven, yeah. Eleven. I've lost count of what seasons, which honestly, dip eleven. He's lost count. How much have you done, Tom? Only two. And you, you imagine to have it down, <laughs> but no. So yes. Dip. Sergeant Naomi Thomas. Mm-hmm. The new face, the fan favorite. Oh. For uh, all the right reasons. Is she? I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. When, because obviously I knew we would have to get a new character when Toby Bukari would have to pick up my guy Toby. I knew we'd get a new character. I didn't know. I wanted them to get a female. I did, but I didn't know until I got the email saying, can you do a reading of our new actress, Chantal Jackson? And I think the email, they didn't specify whether you had it or not, or whether you was audition. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I was only auditioning with just you, I was like, she's pretty much got this part. Because I'd have to audition with... Because in my head, I was like... Because usually I'm in the position where I'm doing chemistries with other actors. And I was like, oh, now it's my turn. I've got to do like six or seven different meetings. Did you only do one? I only did one with you. I did one review in one day, and then I was waiting for an email saying, oh, we've got another actress, and it never came. It never came, and I was like, okay, I'm a, she must have got the part. She must have. But even after our meeting, I was like, there's no way in hell they're not giving her this part. No way in hell they're not giving you this part. I was like, she killed it. She's perfect. She's perfect. So that was my perspective of your audition. So how did that come along? I already know pretty much, I think, 50% of this story, like when you got the call and all that kind of stuff. You know what? I think this is probably the first time I'm going to say this um, like in a in a setting like this. Go ahead. Um, I auditioned for Death in Paradise oh, years I know. Ago. I thought you were going to say something else. I was like, what is she no, tell us? No. Okay, I know. I know this. I know this. Okay. It's okay. I was I like, don't worry. Continue, no. continue, continue, continue. But I auditioned for Death in Paradise like... I'm coming to why I'm saying it to because I'm assuming this is why it just went right, right to the chemistry. Mm, yeah, I auditioned in 2018 for um, another role, and I did like five auditions, mm. and they kept saying, "Hey, we love your performance, but you need to change this and change that and change this and change that." And then after like the fifth one, like at this point. My manager and I were like, okay, so we're going to Guadeloupe. All right, we need to pack crackers. We need to buy some Lasco. You know, the basics that we know we need to survive (laughs) somewhere else in the world. Because obviously, I'm getting this role after four auditions. That's what you think. You You think. And because they kept saying, we love your performance, don't change the performance. That's where they get you. Just change other things. I've been there. Trust me, that's where they get you. (laughs) Clearly, I'm getting this. Yep. 
So, yeah, we did that. And then, of course, I'm waiting for this nice, lovely email to come in. And the email that came in started with the word, unfortunately. Damn. And damn, I was like, damn. Wow. Damn. And I, Taj, I won't lie, I bawled. Wow. Because this is right after I got my agents here, my managers, and I was like, yes, it's just one year in and I got something. So, okay, they feel like, all right, Mm. I'm worth it. I'm doing stuff. And it didn't happen. And I was so devastated and I cried. I was like, this industry is so awful. (laughs) Why am I doing this? I should do something else. I think every actor has (laughs) had that that one meltdown. We don't get it wrong. It's like, I don't want to be an actor. I'm going to go and work in Costco or something or whatever. Proper, <laughs> proper breakdown. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. And <clears throat> that was 2018. I got my agents 2017 when I came here. And every year since then, I've done maybe 1,545. So, hey, so I'm going to round it up, sum it up to that. I've and never counted how many times I've done. I didn't actually count it. I'm just... I, I don't want to count how many I'm going to sum it up to that. I think you know? mine might be close to that as well. Like, you've probably done more because you started know. long before know. me. We were going to get to that. I've done, I'm not good. I don't even want to think about that. Thousands. And, you know, um, and every year I would send them an email saying, oh, thank you for still being here with me because nothing's happening. And 2021, last year, mm. when I sent my gratitude email like <laughs> I do every... <laughs> the beginning of every year... <laughs> <laughs> and my agent said to me, he said, you know what? Um, it's uh, the journey's a marathon. Mm. It's not a sprint. And Fact. we're still here because we believe in you and we know we can do it and all of that. And, you know, I said, oh, this is nice, but still. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like literally after that, his assistant messaged me and said, you know what? We've heard from Death in Paradise they want you to audition for something again. And I was like, really? Okay, cool. But this was maybe like January. And I didn't hear back from them until like March, April. Mm. So I was like, is this really happening? What's going on? And when they got back to us, they were like, "Um, we'd like you to do a chemistry read with the cast. So I said, wow, a chemistry read with the cast. That means like I've jumped all the hoops. because That's like the last step. Yeah, they're like, we know what you can do because you've auditioned for us before. Um, We loved you. You just, it just wasn't the right Right role and the right time. So they were very confident. They're like, oh, we know this person is right for this right now. So I did the chemistry read with you guys on the Thursday. That was hilarious. There was construction happening next door. You remember, I had to go and ask the guys. I was like, could you just stop hammering for like 20 minutes so I can do this take? I thought somebody was like, oh, bless it. You were like like somewhere. I was like, this is not what you want to happen while you're auditioning for a big role. I felt so bad. I was like, oh, no, this is, I feel so sorry for her. But you still killed it, though. Listen, I I had props and everything. (laughs) I had the the rucksack. I had... I came prepared. <laughs> and I did that chemistry read with you guys the Thursday. And the Monday morning, my agents called and said they had a deal. Blau. Just like that. Blau. It's like, Blau. wow, I think, you know, when something is for you, it's just for you. And when it's, it's not, about it's timing. not. It's not your right time. It's not your time. But yeah. your time will come, no? So it's all about just go pretty away. Much, pretty much what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Your first season of Different Powder, season 11. How did you find it? How did you find it? Did I make you feel welcome? You did. Yes. I You're tried. actually one of my favorites. I tried. Good. So I won't I tried. lie. Yes. He's one of my favorites. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we were neighbors. We, we pretty much were neighbors. We were pretty much <laughs> my, my, We hardly yes. saw each other, yeah, but we were true. neighbors. Let's say my villa is on this side of the room. Her villa is on the other side of yeah. the room, pretty much. And I literally, could like, I could just go knock his door whenever. Probably see me as well if I'm. Yeah. Know, certain part if of you're like, at, if you're by the pool. Yeah. And I'm outside, and on, I'll see you. Probably see me. Yeah, but, but yeah. it was grand. It was it was lovely. I'll say. <clears throat> sorry, as it relates to production and being on set, everyone on set was very professional, mm. so we were we were able to get it done, and I appreciate that. And I understand like we were away from home for a long time. Especially because of COVID, we couldn't have family out. Um, and we managed to get it done and get back home in one piece. So I'm very grateful that I'm on this project yeah. um, with the people I was with. Um, and in the Caribbean, 
you know? So what more can you ask for? Mm -hmm. It was lovely. It was grand. Well, young lady, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for um, having me. Let the people know where they can find you on social medias or whatever you want to throw out there. You can find me. I'm Chantal Jackson on Instagram, which I use mostly. Facebook, Chantal Jackson. On Twitter, I think it's Jackson Chantal. It's, I'll, I'll do my research. and I'll, I'll, It's Chantal I'll... Jackson or Jackson Chantal, <laughs> but I'm sure it's Jackson Chantal on Twitter. Chantal Jackson on Instagram and Facebook. I'm not yet on TikTok. I think, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I'm not on TikTok. So. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> great. I, I wouldn't know. But what yeah, Chantal Jackson pretty much everywhere. And you'll see us soon. Sweet. Um, as always, thank you guys again for tuning in. Like, subscribe, share. Um, full audio on Spotify as usual. Thank you to Chantal once again. Thank you to my boy Billy. And we'll see you next time. Love.